At a time when Shongu was a king in Oyo, people in Oyo and surrounding villages strived not to offend or displease him because he owned a thunderbolt. Despite the fact that his presence could be felt across Oyo, as well as in other kingdoms around, Shongu sought to inspire dread in the minds of men with something more powerful than that. So he called on all the best charm makers to make something more powerful for him. But every time they bring him something they come up with, he wasn't satisfied with them. In the end, he chose to beg for help from the Orisha issue. He sent a messenger to Ishu. Ishu agreed to make the charm for Shongu in exchange for a good. But Ishu told Shongu's messenger to tell Shongu that it is his wife, Oya, that will come and collect the charm after seven days. When the seventh day came, Shongu sent Oya to collect the charm from Ishu. And she was instructed to greet Ishu and tell him that his sacrifice is on its way. Oya got to Ishu's place and delivered the message Shongu sent her. And afterwards, Ishu gave her the charm wrapped in a leaf and instructed her to give the charm to her husband and make sure he takes it all. Oya left and on her way, she wondered what sort of power Shongu wanted and why it would be in a small leaf. Out of curiosity, she opened the leaf and found just red powder. She tasted it and it wasn't bad or good. She continued on her journey and arrived in Oyo. Shongu asked her what instructions Ishu had given about the usage of the charm. She was going to say it shouldn't give any instruction, but as soon as she opened her mouth to talk, fire came out from her mouth and Shongu instantly he realized that she had used the charm for herself. Oya quickly escaped the scene, but Shongu was determined to punish her, so he chased her to an area where there were many sheep grazing on the grass. She hid amid the flocks of sheep. When Shongo was not sure of her exact location there, he threw his thunder stones in all directions and they smashed into the ground. As Shongo flung powers among the sheep, Oya became buried under the dead sheep and Shongo didn't see her. So he returned home. Oya's worshipper pleaded with Shongo to forgive her. Shongo agreed and he sent them to go and bring her back home. In the evening, when he still didn't know how to use the charm, he went up the hill where he could see the city and stood there for a while looking at the charm. He later put some on his tongue and as he breathed, enormous fire came out from his mouth and burnt the roof of the city of Oyo and the buildings caught fire. Shongo's dwellings were damaged. Most buildings in the city were destroyed. In one word, Oyo was raised to the ground, and the people had to rebuild it. Chongo continued to dominate the city once it had been rebuilt. It was common for Chongo to throw his thunderbolts in times of conflict. In addition to each stone he throws, a dazzling flare illuminates both the sky and soil. Chongo's mouth spat fire, as everyone knew. While sheltering Oya from Chongo's thunderbolts, the sheep that died were never forgotten. So, as a mark of respect, Oya followers have refused to eat mutin up to this day.